Hey, I'm Kelsey from Premiere Gal, and today we are talking about color correction with Lumetri Color in Premiere Pro. You'll walk away learning how to correct white balance and skin tones. All right, let's jump on in. There are two main reasons why we use Lumetri Color. One, for color correction, and two, for color grading. Color correction is fixing the color or lightness of your image. For example, correcting the white balance. And color grading is the creative process of adjusting the color for a specific mood or theme that you're going for. And for this video, we're focused on color correction. Let's give you a tour of the color workspace. So here I have a clip where I can see that the white balance is off. Before I start to correct it though, go up here to workspaces and make sure that you're in the color workspace. This will open up Lumetri Color on the right and Lumetri Scopes on the left. So Lumetri Color is where we can make changes to the lightness and color of our image. You can see that there are six sections. There's basic correction and there's creative. You can just click on it to close it. There are curves, there are color wheels and match, HSL secondary, and vignette. For this video, we're gonna be focused on basic correction and curves. And on the left are Lumetri scopes. These measurements help us determine what changes to the lightness and the color we need to make. The good thing about using scopes is that they represent your actual image. They never lie, even if your display might. So here are the three scopes that I use the most. I have the YUV vector scope, the Luma waveform, and the RGB parade. And to turn them on, you can just click on this little wrench tool and you can see the vector scope YUV is turned on, the parade RGB is turned on, and the waveform Luma is turned on. If you do not see the Luma waveform type, you can go down to waveform type and make sure that it's set to Luma. So what are these scopes and how do we read them? Let's start with the Luma waveform. As we move the playhead, you can see that it moves because it represents the brightness in the image. So ideally, we want the top of the waveform to be as close to 100 as possible without peaking. Same at the bottom. We want the bottom of the waveform to be as close to zero without distorting either. We don't want it to blow out. And by expanding the waveform, it creates more contrast. Next is the vector scope. So this vector scope is in the shape of a color wheel. And you can see it has an initial for all the different colors in the color wheel. For example, R for red. And in terms of reading the color, the farther it is away from the center, the more saturated it is. And this inner line here, we don't want this color to go beyond that line. This is the broadcast safe line. And this line right here, this is the skin tone line. And we're going to talk about this later on. Next is the RGB parade. So we have the red that represents all the red in the image, the green and the blue. And if all three of these are well balanced, then it's a well balanced shot. But here we can see there's more blue up here comparing it to the red. And that indicates to me that there's a white balance issue, which is what I'm going to show you now. To fix the white balance inside of this shot, we're going to go to Lumetri Color Basic Correction and we can select Auto. And look at that. Adobe Sensei AI technology automatically made these color and light corrections for us. Of course, we could have done it ourselves, but if we don't know where to begin, this is a great starting point. And there's an intensity slider. So if we move it to the left, the corrections become less intense. And if we move it to the right, it becomes more intense. And you can watch the waveform move as we make it less intense to more intense. And you can see it adds more contrast, bringing it closer to 100 and to zero. So I'm gonna leave mine around 62. I think that looks good. This is the before and the after. And you can see that the RGB parade is a little bit more balanced, but there could be a little bit more work done. So to bring the blue down, we can actually go into curves the RGB curves and select blue. And if we want to bring down the blue, it's actually pretty self-explanatory. We can click the top of the blue here and bring it down. And now it's more visually imbalanced. And remember, the scopes don't lie, but we still have some more work. I think the skin tones look a little off. Now I said using my eyes that the skin tones look off, but let me show you why they're off with the vector scope. So first of all, we're gonna go to effect controls and let's use the pen tool here to draw a mask just around the skin tone. So I just clicked to make a little basic mask. Now, when we go back to Lumetri scopes, let's turn off the waveform and let's turn off the parade. And now we can see the skin tone line 
more up close. We want the color to be directly in line with this line. We can see here it's way too off to the yellow side. So let's bring this over. In this case, we're using hue versus hue, which is the change the color of an existing color. And in this case, we're talking about the skin color. Let's use this dropper tool to select this skin color. And it created three points. So now we can move this up slightly. And as we do this, look what's happening over in the vector scope. Notice how when I push this up to the red, towards the red in the vector scope, it starts to line up perfectly. So once it's in line, let's go back over to effect controls and let's turn off the opacity mask by clicking effects. So now let's uncheck it to see the before. Look how green that is. And after it just brought in more red tones in the skin. Isn't that amazing? So the hue saturation curves help you make more refinements to existing colors. But if you want some more natural looking adjustments, we can also create some adjustments to the Luma curve from the RGB curves. So let's go back to Lumetri scopes and let's turn back on the Luma waveform. So if we wanna add some more contrast in our Luma waveform, make it higher towards 100 and lower towards zero, we can use this Luma curve to create a classic cinematic S curve. So here we can click in the shadow portion, click and drag, and you can see it just brings the Luma waveform down. All right, to about here. And then we can click up here in the highlights and watch the waveform as we boost this up. It boosts up all of the brighter areas of the image. So now we have this classic S shape. And of course you can make some adjustments until it feels right. So this is without the classic S curve and this is with the S curve. And finally, what I like to do is go back up to basic correction and just add in a little bit more saturation, like around 115. And when we added that boost, it didn't go outside of the saturation line, so we're good. And now let's show the big reveal. This is before, a little bit more muted, not a lot of contrast, white balance issues, skin tone issues, and after. It looks so much better. That's all for this video. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. And if you wanna watch more videos, a part of the series, just click the link in the description box. See you next time, bye.